Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Lady Brass Carabo, Shimberlus, Calalangri, Mambrolus, Ketelebus, Carabalingra, Mazite, Libuse, Telemalaya. Lord, I give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, God, has come to visit you this evening. Somebody, God, is willing to meet you at the point of your need. So when God has set aside this day to meet with you and have his word shared with you, hallelujah. The Bible says, this is the day that I have made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Therefore, child of God, today is that day that the Lord has made for you. Today is the day that the Lord has made for you. It's just because of you that God made this day. And that is why you are you have been you have been a lot up to this hour. You've been alive up to this hour. Hallelujah. God bless you, child of God, for connecting to our channel this evening because something is about to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to continue from where I stopped last time that we visit we, we had our meeting. Uh, the last time I said to you. The, the why you should develop your personal faith. I talk about the personal faith. And it is interesting to understand there is something that is called personal faith. Amen. Personal faith is not like a general faith. Everybody has got his own faith. You have to have your own faith. There is a faith in you. There's something that God has invested in you called faith. And that faith has to be alive. That faith has to be developed. That faith has to come alive strongly so that your miracle and your blessings will be delivered into your hands. Hallelujah. Nobody can actually receive anything from God without faith. But it's not about faith. It's about your personal faith. I ask you a question this evening. Do you have faith? I'm not talking about if everybody can ask you, do you have faith? Somebody say, I have faith. Many times when we say we have faith, what we're trying to do is that we believe that God can do this thing. We believe that God is going to do that. We believe that God is going to heal our body. We believe that God is going to give our miracle. That is what we generally mean when we say our faith. Somebody can say, I have faith. But you have to understand that it's not about declaring that you have faith. It's about understanding that there is something that has given unto you that is in your inside that is called faith. Having faith is not confessing faith. Having faith is having it as a gift. Having faith is knowing that there is something called faith that is inside of you. It's part of your life. It's part of your life. As God created you and give you heart and give you kidney and give you eyes, give you nose, so also he gave you faith. So if you look inside your life, you see faith. So you don't just have faith because you heard about faith. You have faith because you, there, is, there is a personal faith. There is an imputed faith. There is a faith that God has deposited on your inside. It is called an imputed faith. It's inside of you. It has been in your life from the day you were born. The day you came out from your mother's womb, that faith was inside of you. You did not grow up to meet it. You were born with it. You were born with it. Everyone has got some level of faith or the other. Everyone has got some, 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 some level of faith. Amen. So that is why if you understand that you have faith, then it will help you to understand that that faith needs to be developed. So I talked about development of your faith last week. And then today I'm going to talk about the thing, the four things or five things that can be able to hinder your faith. The five strategies that the devil can use to destroy your faith or to kill your faith. So therefore, this evening, I am bringing a message to you that I titled, The Four, that beware of these four distracting strategies of the enemy that can kill your faith. Beware of it. You have to be aware of it. Beware of these four or five distracting strategies of the enemy to kill your faith. So as God bring it to your understanding, as it come to your awareness, may you be able to avoid them so that your life will never be the same again. 
in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this wonderful time. I thank you for this meeting. I thank you for this telecast. Thank you for the people that are connected to this channel. Thank you for their waiting, oh God. Their waiting will never be in vain. In the name of Jesus, some of you have been waiting for me to come online. I pray that God, your waiting today will not be in vain. May God speak to you. May God bless you. May God break this world to your understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will never be disappointed. As your faith grows, shame will be departed from you. Disappointment will be departed from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this wonderful time. And I thank you for everyone who is connected and are watching me right now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, child of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. So beware of these four distracting strategies of the enemies to kill your faith. So I call it your faith because it belongs to you. It's your faith. It's your gift. It is God blessing you with this faith. And why did God give you this faith? What is the reason of this faith? Why did you have faith? Why did God put faith in you? What is the reason of your personal faith? What is God having in mind when he put this faith in you? Number one, God put this faith in you so that you can have a direct access to him. So you can have a direct access to him. The Bible says without faith, no one can please God. So there is no one that can be able to please God. No one can be able to see God without faith. Without faith, you cannot see God. Without faith, you cannot worship God. Without faith, you cannot serve God. Without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot receive anything from God. So God give you faith so you can be able to have a direct access to him. A direct access to him. A direct access to him. Your worship, your belief become in vain when you don't have direct access to God. So if you are a child of God, you must have direct, direct access to God. If you are a worshiper, if you are, if you, whatever you are, a child of God, a servant of God, wherever you belong, if you don't have access to God, then your Christianity is in vain. Your belief is in vain. Whatever thing you are doing concerning God or towards God, they becomes in vain if you cannot have access to God. So God gives you faith so you can have access to him. He said in his word, without your faith, you cannot please him. Without your faith, you cannot see him. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that from today, may you begin to gain access to God. May God begin to hear your prayer. May God begin to see you. May God begin to look at you. May God begin to put hands on your life. May God begin to attend to your need in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know why I'm talking about faith this evening, but I'm seeing somebody whose faith is coming alive. I am seeing someone whose faith is coming alive, whose faith is coming alive concerning a particular thing in your life, a particular thing you are pursuing, a particular thing you are believing God. Without this faith, you cannot have it. But I see somebody whose faith is coming alive, whose faith is coming alive, whose faith is coming alive, so as to receive, so as to receive, so as to receive that blessing, receive that answer, receive that answer to that question in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I see someone among you who after now, your faith will come alive and then that miracle will happen. That miracle will happen. That blessings will happen. That answers will come in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God gave you faith so you can have access to him. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, may your access to God from today become express and never, ever be hindered in the name of Jesus. It will never be hindered again because your faith is coming alive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody has been looking for faith. There is a faith in you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen and then amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a big amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> now let me take you, I want to show you some few scriptures about faith. 
Then I'll now take you to the hindrances of faith, the things that hinder faith. I talked about some of them last week. I'm going to repeat them again. Or on Sunday, I'm going to repeat them again. And then with the ones that I did not tell you. And then something is going to begin to happen in your life. After this message, get ready. God is going to meet you at the very point of your need in the name of Jesus. Nothing will hinder you again. Nothing will hinder your prayers because your faith will come alive. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now look at James chapter 1. Very popular scriptures. James chapter 1 from verse 6 and then to 7. James chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7. If you have it, please put it on the screen. And then God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now look at what he said. Say, but let him ask in faith. Amen. Let him ask in faith. With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea. Driven and tossed by the wind. Let him ask in faith. So everything is about faith. But this is not just a central faith. It's your faith. So if you have this faith, if you have the personal faith, I have my faith. You have your faith. Everyone has got faith. So if you have this faith developed, then one of the reasons why, or one of the, 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 one of the signs to show that your faith is not working is when your faith or whatever thing you're expecting begin to shake. Or when there is a doubt in your spirit. There's a doubt in your soul. There is a doubt on your inside consigning that thing that you are asking for. Sometimes you believe it will come. But sometimes your mind, your mind tells you that it's not going to come. There's this doubting. So anytime there is a doubting, there is a waving in your belief, in your life concerning a particular thing, that is to say that your faith is not working. But when your faith is at work, there is no doubt anywhere. When your faith is at work, you don't have any iota of doubt anywhere around you. You believe that this thing is done. Not that he is going to do it. He has done it already. The Bible says, believe that God has done it. Then you will receive it. Believe that God has done it. Then you will receive it. You must come to that level as a child of God. To see your faith working perfectly. Amen. Let him ask in faith. With no doubt. For he who doubt is like a wave of the sea. Driven and tossed by the wind. Then seven said. For let that man. Even think. That he will receive anything from God. You see why. Prayers are not being answered. You see why miracles are delayed. You see why people have stopped believing God because nothing is working in their life. And now they believe there is no God. They've been wasting their time. You see why people are withdrawing from believing God or from praying. Why? Because they are not receiving any answer from God. And the James stated it here clearly. Let that person never think he will receive anything from God. That means God will not answer the prayer. Why? Because when your faith refuses to grow, when your faith refuses to increase, when your faith refuses to develop, then you have doubt in everything that you are told. And that way you cannot get anything. That way you cannot get any answer. That way you cannot get breakthrough. That way God cannot come in. If God must come in, 
God doesn't want to see anything that is called doubt. But the cure to doubt is a strong faith. The cure to doubt is a strong faith. Sometimes you doubt in your spirit as a human. But if you must deal with doubt, let your faith be developed. There is what you call great faith, small faith, and ordinary faith. Your faith must grow from level to another level. It must grow from small faith where, you, where it is now, develop to great faith. You must grow from great faith to greater faith. Amen. There are small faith, there are big faith, there are great faith, there are greater faith. So your faith must grow from level to another level. There's a need that your faith must develop. The development of your faith causes the increase, changes the level from one glory to another. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God will give you grace to connect to this supernatural power of God that will keep you focused in order never to have doubt in anything you are told about God. And your faith will continue to increase until that mountain is removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Until that mountain is removed in the name of Jesus, your faith will continue, will continue, will continue to grow in Jesus' name. So the Bible said here, if your faith refuses to grow, then you cannot receive anything from God. And how do you know that your faith is not growing? Because you have doubt. Because it waves like a sea. Today you believe. Tomorrow you don't believe. Today you believe. Today you don't believe. If you really, really believe, there's nothing that will make you never to be in God's presence anytime. You have every other day for yourself. But that particular Sunday is never for you. If you really have faith and believe God, you will never joke with that day. Because that day is a day set aside for God. If your faith is at work, you will know that that day is supposed to be in the presence of God. And I can tell you, no one has ever gone to God's presence and returned the same way. There must always be something that will happen. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. As your faith such growth, May any time you kneel before God, may any time you appear before God in worship, in giving, in prayer, whatever thing you do in the name of the Lord, may God shower you with blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. As your faith will grow, God will take you to levels and make you answer to people's prayers because people will see what God has done in your life and they will believe your God. May you be the signs that people will see and say, I want to serve God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and then amen. Hallelujah. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. <coughs> Hebrews 11, 6. Hear what he said. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to, feed God, to, to, to please God. And then I love what he said next. For he that cometh to God must believe. The word believe there means must have faith. He that cometh to God must have faith that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. God is faithful. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word rewarder means that God rewards you. He is the author of reward. He is the one that rewards you. As you pray, he rewards you. As you serve him, he rewards you. Reward means he blesses you. He hears your prayer. He answers your prayer. He does whatever thing you ask of him. He gives unto you. That is a reward. So God rewards you. But before you are rewarded, he wants to see your faith. You must first have faith that God is, that God is, there is a God, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You must first of all believe. So, going to God without faith is like going to stream without any fetching bucket or fetching rubber. Amen. The person will return back empty. So, you must believe you must have faith that God is, that there is a God. 
Your personal faith helps you to understand there is a God. And then that God is a rewarder of everyone that seek him diligently. The rewarder means he is the one that answers prayer. It's an assurance to you that any time you come to him, he answers your prayer. He blesses you. Miracles follows you. He makes you a wonder in the word of men. Why? Because he is a God. But that can only happen when your faith is developed. Receive grace to develop your faith so you can be able to match up to the standard. When men are saying there's a casting down, you shall be saying there's a lifting up. When men shall say there is a casting down, you shall be saying there is a lifting up. Because your faith will see what others are not seeing. Your faith will take you to a higher level. May from today, may God lift you from the ground and place you above every forces of darkness. As you shout amen, miracle is happening in your life. Miracle is happening in your family. Miracle is happening anywhere around you. In Jesus' name. Amen and then amen. Hallelujah. Now the same Hebrews chapter, 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 chapter eleven. You know, now, now, now from 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 verse fifteen to, to 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 seventeen. I want you to to put it on the screen if you have it, and then and then and then look into your Bible. Hebrews eleven fifteen to seventeen. He said, and truly, if they had been mindful, if they had been mindful of the country where they came out from, look at what faith does. Had it been their mind is where they came out from, they would have had the opportunity to return back. And he said, but now they declare a better country that is unheavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he that for he had prepared for them a city. Amen. He has prepared for them a city. That city is called a heavenly city. That means you can live your heaven on earth. That means your heaven can come on earth here. Now hear me. When God has answered your prayers, it is a ladder. But when God has blessed you, it is your heaven. Your heaven can come on earth here. You can live inside your heaven here on this earth. That is talking about fulfillment. Talking about living a palatable life. That's talking about living a life of no lack, of no want. Many have entered into that city. It is called a city. It is called a city. A city of God. Amen. A city of God. Let's take it again, verse 16. But now they desire a better country. That is, and heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city. Now, verse 17. By faith, when Abraham was tired, or was tried, offer up Isaac. And he that had offered up Isaac. Sorry. And he that had offered up his only begotten son. That is Isaac. Praise the Lord. He has offered up his own only begotten son that he received by promise. He received by promise. A promise was given to him about Isaac. A promise was given to him about Isaac. And then when God fulfilled that promise, he received the promise. Inside the promise was Isaac. But verse 17 said, By faith, Abraham. So Abraham got Isaac by faith inside the promise. And when that was fulfilled in his life, he was living in a city. A city called the city of God. Amen. God will take you to your own city. Listen to me, this city is not talking about one, you know, physical, geographical location here on this earth. The city is a life. It's a life. It's a lifestyle. It's a kind of life you enter. 
you will lack nothing. It's a kind of life you enter. Demons cannot oppress you or they don't oppress you anymore. It's a kind of life you enter. No evil weapon forms against you that prospers. You are surrounded. You are covered. God got your back. He watches over you. You sleep like a child. You wake up. You go out. It's your blessing. You come in your blessing. He said, your going out shall be your blessings and your coming in shall be your blessings. He said, your days shall be like the days of the tree. He said, I will bless your bread and bless your water. I will take away disease away from you. This is a life. This life is called a seed. Because in heaven, there is no sickness. In heaven, there is no demonic oppression. In heaven, there is no death. In heaven, there is no bad uncle, bad sister, sending poison, sending charms, burning things, trying to kill you. It doesn't happen in heaven. When God brings that kind of lifestyle of heaven on earth, that you are living your heaven here on this earth, and that is called a city. Whatever thing that it is that never exists in heaven doesn't exist in your city. Doesn't exist in there. Death does not happen there. Chance does not function there. Demons does not enter there. No evil enters there. It is a city of God. It is a place where God is not ashamed to be called my God. Why? Because everything is at your beck and call. Hallelujah. It is a life. But your personal developed faith is the step that takes you to that life. It's a lifestyle. If you check the Bible very well, you see people that God has taken there. God took them to that kind of palatable life. They live a life with no struggle. They live a life with no sickness and disease. No more binding and losing. No more powers from pit of hell attacking you. If you can enter that city, that heaven or earth, you shall no more have bad dreams. God will speak to you. God will be with you. God will be your God. And if God covers you, nothing cannot cover you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith will rise. Your faith will increase. Your faith will develop to take you to that life. You need that life. I need that life. Everyone needs that life. That life, it is a fulfillment of destiny. May you get there in Jesus' name. Amen and then amen. Hallelujah. Now, I show you something again here. John chapter 1, from verse 4. He said, listen, when you have this faith, when your faith is developed, when your faith increases, then the faith reveals to you. The faith, the faith shows you something. It reveals to you the full capacity of Jesus. The full capacity of God. The full capacity of the Holy Spirit. He reveals to you the full capacity, the power of Trinity. Which, when these three forces unite together in your life, there's no devil from any pit of hell that can cross your path. That can cross your path. It is not possible. You become untouchable, indestructible. Nothing kills you. No demons touches you anymore. When the full capacity of the Trinity is revealed, then your knowledge opens. Then you know who is your God. You know that you are surrounded. You are surrounded by, by powers. You are surrounded by by, 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 by God, by Jesus and the Holy Spirit and also with the angels. Hallelujah. This is a life, but your developed faith sends you there. Now, if you check it again, that John chapter 1 from verse 4 says, 4 says, Parable Chanel, in him was life and that life was the light of man. Five. The light shines in darkness. And the darkness could not overcome it. Six. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
concerning that light. <laughs> so that through him, all might believe. Now look at 7. He came as a witness to testify. Hallelujah. He came as a witness to testify. If you read down, the Bible said, he is not that light. But he came to lead you to that light. To lead you to that light. You need that light. Imagine a light that when it shines, darkness disappears. The light that is the life of man. You need the light. He said, in him was life. And that life was the light of man. That light is life of man. When you receive that light, that light translates into life. And then any man that has that light is living in his heaven on earth. Is living in the city of God. Is living in the city of God. You need to live in light. You need to live in light. Somebody has lived in darkness for so long. But I see God bringing light to your family. I see God bringing light in your obscurity. I see God bringing light in your community. I see God bringing light in your life, in your home, in your marriage. There is a place in your life that darkness has covered. In the name of Jesus Christ, as your faith is developed, may your eyes open. May you see the light that God has surrounded you with. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said that light is the life of man. When you have that light, you have a life. When you have that light, you have a life. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, receive the impartation of that light that gives you life in the name of Jesus. There's no life outside the light of God. There's no life outside the light of God. May your eyes be opened by the power of development of your faith that you may see what God has prepared for you in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. There are about 30 of you that is watching me right now. This light is upon you. But you have not been able to see it because your faith has not increased. You are being covered with this light. That is why no matter what has happened in your life, you still survive. You have had so many terrible dreams. Even when you wake up, you are afraid. Yet, would that thing that you dreamt about never come to pass? Never affect you? Never hurt you? Why? Because that light is existing in your life. That light has given you life. But you didn't know that you have a life given by light because your faith has not been able to be developed. Let your faith be developed. Then your eyes will open. Then you will see the light of God has surrounded you. And let me shock you. Why you don't know that you have this light is because you don't know what the light carries. And I want to tell you, for the fact that you believe Jesus, for the fact that you have Jesus, then you have this light. Jesus is this light. But you wouldn't know that Jesus you pray to every day, that a church you go every day to pray and say in the name of Jesus, that Jesus you mention every day, you don't know that that Jesus is the light because your faith has not been developed. When your faith developed, then you will know that you have already gotten that light. Then your eye will be open. Then you will see the shining light all over you. Jesus is that light. Do you have Jesus? Then you have the light. And that light is your life. May you receive this life. In this life, you will never experience failure. In the name of Jesus. No one had ever got this life that fails. Because as Jesus didn't fail, then you will not fail. Because that is the life that was in Jesus. And that life is in you right now. So may that life provide for you. May that life provide for you your maximum spiritual security in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever thing that it is that has ever made you cry in the time past, it will not come again in the name of Jesus. Let your eyes be open. Let your heart be open to see Jesus in your presence, to see Jesus in your front. And when you see Jesus, you have seen light. And that light is what commences a new life in your life. Receive a new life in the name of Jesus. Because you, this new life needs to emerge. When this life comes alive, 
they will see that the things that used to happen to you before will not happen again. The evil things that used to happen in your life will not come again. Why? Because in your former life, sickness can penetrate into your body. In your former life, you can cry. People can deceive you. A lot of things can happen to you. But in this new life, no, nobody deceives you. No sickness enters your body. Nothing works against you in this new life. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, may nothing again work against you and your entire family as your faith comes alive in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to prophesy to somebody that is watching me right now. Receive this prophecy to your life and your family in the name of Jesus because a light is coming to your life right now. A light is coming to your life right now. And this light is your life. Now watch this. Before now, you've been going through oppressions, depressions. A lot of things have been happening in your life negatively. Now as I speak this life into your life, may this life shine the light that will commence a new life in your life. And then whatever thing that you are carrying in your body before I speak now, as the life, as the light comes alive, may you never experience them again in the name of Jesus. Sickness disappearing right now. I see them will disappear in the name of Jesus. Somebody with a kidney problem. Somebody with a heart failure. Something new is happening in your life right now. God is healing you right now. The light has entered into your life. That your body is receiving healing right now. Deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody, your life will never remain the same again after this message. Because your faith will come alive in Jesus' name. Don't forget, it is about your personal faith in Jesus' name. Amen and then amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, look at this. The four things that you need to be aware of that can hinder your prayers, that can kill your faith, that can keep you permanently out from God's presence. The four distracting strategies from the pit of hell that can make you never to believe God again, that can make you never to listen to any gospel, that can make you to be distracted about the things of God. You need to be aware of them. So I'm going to mention them one after the other as we go into, into it in scripture. Hallelujah. The number one, which I told you that day, I said, beware of serving other gods. I want to start from there. Beware of serving other gods. And then I read it to you in the book of Exodus chapter 20. From verse 4 to 5. Say, I'm a jealous God. You shall not worship another God before me. That shall not serve idol. That if you do, then I will be angry with you. And I will bring a curse upon you that will last for your third generation. So when God is angry, your prayer cannot be answered. So these are the strategies that the devil can devise. To make sure that your faith is destroyed. And your, when your faith is captured, when your faith is arrested... When your faith is destroyed, then you lose your relationship with God. Remember, I told you, one of the reasons why God gave you personal faith is to have a personal direct access to Him. So faith gives you, your personal faith gives you direct access to God. And then when this faith is destroyed, when this faith is cut off, when this faith is shut out of your life, then your relationship with God becomes cancelled. God cannot reach you, you cannot reach God. So the devil is targeting your faith. The devil is not happy that God gave you faith. You have to guide that faith. You have to protect that faith from the things that you listen to. Because most of times, what kills your personal faith are the things you listen to. You listen to so many things. You listen to so many things in the, in the YouTube, in the, in the Facebook. This one happened in the church. One pastor do that. The other pastor do this. The other church do that. The other church. Many of you like to listen to those things. And the, the more you keep listening to them, the more it kills your faith. So these things are the strategies that the devil is bringing to make sure that they destroy your personal faith. They bring it to your hearing. Because the more you continue to hear, 
the more your faith destroys. So the devil wants to destroy your faith. He wants to capture your faith. And when he gets your faith, then he has gotten all over you. I pray in the name of Jesus that no matter the plans, no matter the strategy of the devil, may your faith never be captured. May your faith never be captured. May your faith never be arrested by the pit of hell. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will keep your faith protected. Your personal faith will continue to increase, continue to grow and develop until the devil can never touch you again in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, what is the danger of not worshipping other gods? Because worshipping another god will kill your personal faith. Now, why? What is the danger behind worshipping other gods that makes your faith not to be effective? Now, you see that in the book of Psalm chapter 16 from verse, from verse 4. Psalm chapter 16 from verse 4 to 6. If you have it, you can put it on the screen. Psalms 16 from verse 4 to 6. Now, here we said, Their sorrow shall, in, shall be multiplied. Who has after another God, or who who hasten after another God, and 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 and, and, and the, 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 their faith will be cut off. I want you to see this. The danger behind worshiping another God is that it increases your sorrow. It increases your sorrow because your faith will no longer help you. As you worship other God, as you do babalawo things. All those to do things as you do them, then your faith, your personal faith will be destroyed, will be contaminated. And the moment that happens, then your sickness, your sorrow increases. The danger behind certain other gods is that it increases your soul, it increases your pain, it increases your trouble, it keeps you redundant forever, it keeps you low forever, it keeps you down, it keeps you sick. It keeps you failing all the time. Amen. The danger is terrible. The danger is terrible. People don't see it. Let me tell you. Beware of people that you tell about what you want. I don't know what is happening in my life. They'll say, okay, let us call this Baba. Now, the, sometimes they may appear to, 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 to have been good friends or to help you, but they are increasing sorrow in your life. Whatever thing that is the reason why you go there, it's going to increase. It's going to increase. Whatever thing that is your reason, where you consult other gods, where you consult one babalawo, one witch doctor, whatever thing that it is you go there for, is going to increase. It's going to increase. It's going to increase. So the danger behind worshipping other god, serving other god, or going after other god, is that your sorrow will increase. Your pain will increase. So stay far. Stay away from other god. And then look unto God, the Holy One of Israel. Look unto him, look unto the hill, for there comes your head. Look unto him, for they look unto him, their faces were no more ashamed. Look unto God, the author and the finisher of your faith. Looking unto God is the cure to whatever thing that it is that makes you cry in life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God will help you to walk against the things that work against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now let me take it again. He said, Their sorrow shall increase. Whose sorrow? The people that go after another God, their sorrow shall increase. Their sorrow shall be multiplied. Who hasten after another God? Their, 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 their drink offering of blood will not offer. Praise the Lord. And then he said, I will not offer. Then he said, nor take up their names of their names on my lips. Now here, where I want to take you. The Lord. Hmm. Oh Lord. You are the portion of my inheritance. And my cup. You shall maintain. My Lord. Then six. The lies have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. That is in God. Now, there are two people here. Remember, one person are those who go after another God. He said, 
their sorrow will multiply. Their sickness, whatever thing that it is, their trouble will multiply because they go after another God. Their drink offerings of blood, I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. Danger of flowing other God is that it multiplies your soul. May you from today. Stay clear, stay far, wash your hands off anything that has to do with another God and then face Jehovah and your face will never be ashamed in the name of Jesus. So beware of these four things. Number one, worship another God because it has consequences. Then number two, Mambrala Zekelebu Shangralas Katarabu Limbrulus Katelemu Lishaya. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Nelebu Shandaya. Number two, beware of trusting yourself. Be, beware of trusting yourself. As we are aware of trusting another God, beware of trusting yourself. Amen. Then you get that from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Then from verse 5 to 6, I hear what he said. Thus said the Lord, Cause be that man that trusted in man. Cause be the man that trusted in man. Cause be unto that man who trusts in man. That's what he said. And make it flesh his arms, and whose heart depart from the Lord. Cause be unto that man that trusts in man. So the danger of trusting in a man is that it attracts more cause. Why is God saying you should not trust in a man? Because he wants you to trust only him. Because men will fail you. Men will disappoint you. But God will never disappoint you. Why do you cry when people disappoint you? Why do you cry when what you're expecting from people is not what you're seeing? Why do you cry? Because what you are told is not what you saw. Why do you cry? Because... Whom you thought that will not hurt you is the one that is hurting you. People cry because they put their trust in men and they bring hurt, devastations, and so many troubles into their lives. But whosoever that trusts in God will never be put to shame. Now look at what 6 says. For he shall be like the, 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 the heat in the desert. You see that? He shall be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the, 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 the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. See the danger? He shall be like that heat that comes from the desert. The danger is terrible. But anyone who trusts in the Lord shall fulfill his destiny. Anyone that trusts in the Lord shall be a voice, shall be a blessing, shall be a blessing to his generation, shall be a sign for people to know that there is a God. God turns you into a wonder in the world of man when you trust in him. The danger of trusting in man is that your life, when you trust in them, they are going to make your life so miserable that your life will be like the heat that comes from desert. When we talk about heat that comes from desert, some of you will not understand because you never went to desert. Ask those people who went to Europe through desert. They pass through desert before they cross over to Europe. Ask them the experience in the desert. It's a place where you can't just survive. Anyone that survives there is the lost doing. The heat that comes there can roast a corn, can boil a yam, can cook food. A terrible heat comes from there. And a man of that kind of lifestyle go nowhere. The Bible says the danger in trusting in men is that your life will be like the heat that comes from desert. I pray in the name of Jesus. May your personal faith be developed and give you direct access to God that even though you are 
believing any man for whatever. But let your trust be in God and let God use men to bless you. Don't expect blessing from men, but expect that God will use men to bless you. Some of you, you are, you are looking for, for favor. You are looking for favor in one office or the other. You need a job. You need your document to be renewed. You need, you need, you need something, a favor from a particular office. There's something you apply for. As you trust God, God will use those in the office to bless you, to give you the document, to give you the job. He will use the doctors, the nurses to heal your body. He will use whatever thing that is available to be a blessing to you. But trust God, trust God, believe God, then he uses every other thing to bless your life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that from today, as your personal faith grows, may you never, ever be a victim of the curse that comes from the desert in the name of Jesus Christ. So trusting a man is number two strategy that can kill your faith, that can destroy your personal faith. When you continue to trust in man, then you will continue to cry. But when you learn to trust God, trust God, then you will not cry. Trusting God is a cure for everything that has to do with tears and crying in life. Many of you have cried a lot. I pray that the cry you cried the last will be the last cry you will ever cry. In the name of Jesus. Believe God. Learn to trust him. And then hold on to him for everything. And he will never, ever disappoint you. In Jesus' name. Amen and then amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now look at what happened here. Isaiah chapter. I want you to, to see this one. It's very, very powerful. Isaiah chapter 30. From verse 1. If you have it, put it on the screen. And I want you to, to revise this scripture when you get home. Or rather, after the service, read this particular scripture over and over again. I pray that God will speak to you concerning what is about to come here in the name of Jesus. I tell you again, when the service is over, read this particular Isaiah chapter 31 from verse 1 to 3. Put it on the screen. Read it as we round up and then use it to pray this night and God will do you good in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at what he said. Isaiah chapter 31 from verse 1. Woe unto them, cause be unto them that go down to Egypt for help. These are people that are trusting men. They go down to Egypt to look for help. And stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Watch this. Danger. Danger of trusting men. Of trusting flesh. Cause be unto them that go down to Egypt to look for help. Instead of looking unto God for help, they go down to Egypt to look for help. And he said, they stay on horses and trust in chariots. Because they are many. The chariots are many. Horses are many. They trust in horses, trust in chariots, thinking that they will help them in time of fight. And the horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek, neither seek he them. They look not unto the Holy One. They look not unto the Lord. They look not unto Jehovah. And then look at what happened too. Yet, he also is wise. God is wise. And he said, and we bring evil and will not call back his word. But we arise against the horse, the house of the evildoers. And against the help of them that walk in iniquity. Now, three. 
Now, the Egyptians whom you have gone to look for, help from, they are men and not God. The men, the people you are putting their hope on, they are men, they are not God. And their horse is flesh, not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand to destroy <laughs> but the man that is hurt and the one that they are helping shall fall. And he that is helping shall fall down. And they shall fail together. Hallelujah. This is not good. I, I, I tell you this is not good. Cause be unto them that go down to Egypt to look for help. Because they saw they have horses. They have horsemen. Their horsemen are strong. They saw that they have weapons. They think they can help them in a battle. The battle you are in is not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. Only God and God alone can fight it for you. Say, I shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace. When it comes to the battle of life, who do you look unto? You look unto God. He said, anyone that look unto men for any form of help, he said, cost be unto that man. You know why? Because the man cannot take you anywhere. He said, the horse which they trust, they are not, they are flesh, they are not spirit. The men whom you have gone to look for, help from, they are not God. That is what he said. They are not God. He said, but when the trouble shall come, and they will not be able to help you. And whatever you go to them to look for shall increase. And when it increases, both the man who is helping and the one that is helping, the man they are helping and the one who is helping him, they shall offer. They shall offer. Why? Because no one can help each other. Let me analyze this thing to you before I go to another. The Bible says something in the book of Matthew chapter 21. And that got me into a powerful revelation of life that changed my world, changed my perspective, and it changed my way of believing. No matter what you told me, I am not moved. I believe God. No matter what you promised me, I believe God. I believe God. If it is the will of God, God can use you. Listen to me. Appreciate me. Honor man, but trust God. Trust God. Trust Him. Your trust, your faith to God, will make Him to use men to bless your life. The Bible says, shaking together, running over, shall men bring unto your bosom. God caused men to bless you. No man can bless you except if God moved him to bless you. The blessings that works is the blessings that men bring to you. Listen, when a man is sent by God to bless you, he asks nothing in return. He asks nothing in return. You may be a musician. You may be, you may be a tailor. You may be, you may be a, a fashion you know, and designer. I don't know. You, you, they, they, you may have a skill. You, you may have a gift. But... When somebody comes into your life to help you, how do you know who God has sent to help you? He will come into your life to push you up, to make you famous. But he is not there in your life because of what will come out from your musical career or what will come out of, from your whatever thing you are doing. He is not there for what is going to come out from it. But he is there to take you there. And when he takes you there, he goes. His mission accomplishes. These are men that God has sent. But people who came to help you that God did not send, they are coming to negotiate with you because they are there for what is going to come from what you are going to do. So they come into your life to help your musical career. But once money begins to come, they will share it with you. These are people that are not sent by God. But those who are sent by God, 
They are not coming because of what will come out of you. They are coming because God has sent them to push you up. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. May God send men to push you up. And may you identify them. Even when there are two that are coming to your life. One sent by God. One not by God. May you be able to identify the one that is sent by God. And they follow that one. Because that one will take you to where you are going. Those who are not sent by God. At a time they will abandon you. At a time they will, they will say they are not in again. At a time they can breach the contract. They may abandon you exactly when you need them most. But those that are sent by God will start with you from grass and they go and grow with you to grace. They will be there with you in the tough time, in the hard time, encourage you, make sure that you never lack anything until you get there. Many people have been pushed up without knowing who pushed them up and without seeing them asking them for a return. How do you know men that God has sent? They, know, they need nothing in returns because God is going to bless them for blessing you. I pray in the name of Jesus that your eye be open to see those who are sent by God, to know them and identify them and work with them in whatever career, in whatever gift, in whatever thing that you want to do in life, in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew 21 said, a donkey was tied in a tree and he said to disciples, go and lose the donkey and bring the donkey to me. Why? Because the donkey needs to be sat upon. The donkey is like a horse. Somebody is going somewhere. Somebody wants to travel. He needed a horse. And the horse was tied. And when the horse was tied, the tying of the horse is hindering the movement of somebody. When the devil wants to deal with you, he ties you and ties your helper. He ties you and he ties your helper. The one who will help you is tied. You that is to be helped is tied. The devil brings people to that platform. Anytime the devil wants to punish somebody, that is what he does. He ties you and he ties people that will help you. But I pray in the name of Jesus. As you look unto God, as your faith increases, may God send people who will come to lose you from where you are tied and take you up. I pray that God will bring people into your life that will come to raise you up in life that devil cannot tie in the name of Jesus Christ. I lose you this night and I lose your helpers in the name of Jesus. Whoever that is tied anywhere around you, I set them free in the name of Jesus. As I lose you, so I lose those that will help you. In Jesus' precious name, they will come to your direction. And when they come, the devil cannot have access to their life. They will finish what they have started. Did they come in marriage? They will finish it with you. Did they come in business? They will finish it well with you. Whatever reason why they come into your life, sent by God, you will start it well and then you will end well in the name of Jesus. Anyone that the devil has tied, as we hear this word, as your faith increases, Release, receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. I release you right now from wherever your enemy has tied you. And as I release you, so I release whosoever that is meant to help you in the name of Jesus. Freedom has begun in your life. Freedom has begun in your family. Figure, freedom has begun in your world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody, God, is showing up in your case. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The danger, never you trust in men, but trust in God. Because men are flesh, they are not God. And if they are not God, they cannot help you. They are flesh like you. So if you couldn't do it, they will not do it. If somebody must help you, somebody must have something that you don't have. And that is when God has sent them to you. May you receive your helpers from God. May you receive your helpers from God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and then amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Then number three, beware of trusting in your skill. And I show you that scripture that day in the book of Ecclesiastes. I want you to read it on your own. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 11. Beware of trusting yourself. Then look at what happened here. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of Daniel, chapter 2. I want you to put it in writing. When the service is over, then you are going to read. You're going to read it. Amen. Put it in writing. Then read it after service. He said, He will. He said he will keep the feet of the saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. That is done. That is um, First Samuel chapter two verse nine. Amen. First Samuel chapter two verse nine. He said, "By strength shall no man prevail." So it's dangerous to trust in yourself. Amen. It's dangerous to trust in yourself. It's dangerous to trust in yourself. Amen. Then lastly, beware of deceit. Beware of deceit. Deceive. Beware of deceit. It's either you are deceiving people or people are deceiving you. So beware of deceit. Hallelujah. Beware of the seed. Now, Galatians chapter chapter 6 from verse 7 to 9. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 from verse 7 to 9. Now look at what it said. Lastly, Galatians chapter 6 from verse 7 to 9. Beware of deceit. Deceiving people or people deceiving you. Beware of it. If you are deceiving people, beware. It will kill your personal faith. It will destroy your faith. You cannot receive anything. Amen. He said, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. That's what he said. Do not be deceived. And he said, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow, that he will also reap. For he who sow in flesh will of flesh reap corruption. But he who sow in the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us grow strong. Let us grow strong. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Hallelujah. The word, if you faint not, means if your faith did not fail, then you will reap. If your faith is not hindered, then you will harvest. If your faith is not cut short, if your faith is not destroyed, if your faith is not killed, then you will harvest whatever thing that is good in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, beware of trusting in men. Beware of trusting another God. Beware of trusting yourself. And beware of deceiving people. These four things is satanic, demonic. These four things is the strategy. This four thing is the reason why people cannot move forward in life. Beware of these four distracting satanic strategies to kill your faith. 
if you can avoid this four vital points, your faith will not be destroyed. Then you will harvest. Then you will reap. Then it will be well with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I know somebody is blessed. Put it in practice. Then you will see the good thing about it. In Jesus' name. Amen. My next meeting with you, by the grace of God, I'm going to share with you on how can you grow the faith. Remember, from the first day, I said, why I should develop my faith. We talk about developing personal faith. And today I talk about the four things that can destroy the faith. Then our next meeting, I'm going to talk about how do I develop it? How do I grow my faith? How will I make my faith to increase? That is our next topic. And I know that God is going to bless you mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you stay tuned to this telecast, in Jesus' name. I pray for you today, that all that we have heard, all that I have preached to you, let it not fall on empty ground, but let it fall on the good ground of your heart, that will fertilize your soul, spirit, and body, and cause internal growth, supernatural growth in your faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And may God put you far from whatever thing that destroys faith. Because anything that destroys faith will destroy a man. Whatever thing that caught your faith has caught God from you. And when you are caught off from God, then you are gone. I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever thing that it is, that the enemy is planning to use to kill and destroy your personal faith, to hinder your prayers, and they put you far from God. May God release his power upon you. May his grace come upon you and then place a stack of deliverance upon your life that you are delivered and the devil will not touch you in the name of Jesus. Let these four things be far from you. Even the ones I did not mention, that is a means that the devil wants to use to destroy your faith. I pray that God shall put all far from you. All shall be far from your dwelling. Far from your family. Far from everything that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. I want you to continue praying for us. Pray for me. Pray for the ministry. Pray for more grace. The more God blesses me with his word, the more I am a blessing to you. I pray that I will remain a blessing to you and to your generation, even until Christ comes. In the name of Jesus. As you continue to believe in me, also believe in God. God will establish you. And then his grace upon my life will prosper you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm still your pastor. A maker from Zaragoza. That same voice in this city called Zaragoza. From the Gracious Rema Chapel Ministry. This is what God is doing program. Share this video. Invite your friends. Make sure that they are connected. If God is blessing you in this channel, bring them to listen to what you are listening to. For the more you continue to listen to the word of God, the more this word of God transforms your life. It will not be long from now when your life shall be transformed totally in Jesus' name. If there's anything that somebody wants to give you that is better than God, run away. Don't collect it. If there's any message that somebody wants to preach to you that is not of God, that is not God, then run away. Everything that has to do with message that will bless your life must be God must be God. If no one can give you God, stay away from him. If nobody can bring God to you, stay away from him. Stay away from people that cannot bring God to your life. And stay connected to whoever that will bring God to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the hand of God will remain permanently upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.
I love you, don't forget that. But Jesus loves you most. I will see you again in my next program in what God is doing. God bless you. Remain blessed until I come your way again. In Jesus' name, amen and then amen.